Good afternoon. Uh, now I will be talking about another interesting behavior change communication approach, positive deviance, which we are trying out in this region on malaria prevention and control, as well as on dengue. So positive deviance is a framework, is an asset-based approach which identify, appreciate, and build on the positive behaviors of the community. So usually, uh, through other problem-solving approaches, we look at the community that what is missing, what is lacking, and what is broken. And we, as an expert, try to fix it. But when we see through, look through the positive deviant lens, are where the PD class is, we only look at what is working, what are the strengths, what are the, the assets, and we simply try to build on those assets. And those behaviors are very accepted because they are from the community. We are not bringing anything from the outside. So the concept is that in every community there are certain individuals whose uncommon behaviors enable them to find better solution than their neighbor with whom they share the same resources. So it means that there are some people who, despite all odds, sharing similar resources, working in the same condition, they somehow manage to have better health outcomes. So we just try to find out those people and then share their behavior with the other community members. A PD concept came from nutrition literature. It has been applied on nutrition by Monique and Jerry Sternen from the Positive Deviant Initiative. And this uh, model has been replicated in more than 40 countries. After the, after the big success in nutrition, it has been tried out on different uh, health and social issues. Malaria Consor Consortium is the first organization which are trying it out on malaria and dengue in the region. So why PD in this region? As you all know that our focus is now from control to elimination. And when we are talking about control to elimination, the BCC tools need to be also changed, need to be also uh, fixed based on the target audience because your target audience will change when you're talking about control to elimination. You're talking about more challenging population, mobile and migrants, you know, the people who are uh, marginalized, ethnic groups, and uh, other high-risk communities. So it means we need, to, we need some approaches which are more focused, more targeted, and uh, more community-based. So PD can be an uh, approach for this, uh, to address this issue. Okay, and we also learned from different surveys in, in the region that interpersonal communication is one of the most uh, appropriate as our, you know, uh, you know, light uh, way of communication in the community. So it means that uh, if we have to adopt interpersonal communication so we can see how we can use positive deviance as a, because positive deviance is a strong interpersonal communication tool. So one of the key objective was to try it out on malaria prevention and control in the region to uh, orient national programs uh, on this uh, asset-based approach. And we have already conducted orientation session in Cambodia and also in Myanmar, in which we invited all the key partners and we oriented them on this approach before we started working in these countries. And also we will be evaluating so that we could share the lessons learned with you. So in, uh, in Greater Mekong region, we have piloted, are piloting positive deviance uh, in various countries. We have done uh, it in Cambodia with excellent support from CNM, Dr. Thavreen. Uh, it was a kind of a pre-pilot, which helped us to refine our tools and approach. And now, actually, uh, in Myanmar, we have done the proper pilot, one-year pilot. And at the moment, we are at the evaluation. We have just conducted the baseline survey. So the result will be, uh, in, you know, the data is being entered, and we will be evaluating this soon so that we could share it with you that how it worked. And also, we have just applied it in Thailand. Also, we have applied in Banti Minche on dengue prevention as well. So PD, we apply PD into two phases. Phase one is PD process. And that is something 
which is different from the other BCC approaches. The PD process is very engaging. It engages the people from the very beginning, from the very first meeting. When we enter the community, we engage them, and we consider communities as a strong partners. We never consider them as a passive recipients who are just sitting, enjoying, and getting, receiving bad nets. If you will be considering them a passive recipients, it means that you know, um, uh, you, they will not be actively engaged. So we need to engage them so that they also own the success, own the failures, and they are also responsible for your program. So in the first meeting, we orient them that, look, we are here in this community, empty hand. So we are not experts. We did not bring anything from outside. We will work with you. And we know that problem is malaria or dengue or whatever, but the solutions are also available in the same community. Do you want to work with us to find those solutions so that uh, we could also adopt those solutions and be healthy like them? They say yes, a lot of interest generated. So the next is situation analysis, another very missing component in other BCC approaches. Usually, we do not try to understand who the community are, what are they doing, what are the key behaviors, what are the issues with them. We think we are experts, we know the community well, so we come up with nice messages, and then we just get their buy-in by pre-testing messages. So the community does not have any ownership, any association, any link with those things. What we do here, we uh, conduct situation analysis through focus group discussions and in-depth interviews and try to understand first what are the normative behaviors regarding malaria, regarding dengue, what most of the people are doing, and then try to understand is there anyone who is doing differently, who has the solution, who is healthy despite all the risk factors. And then during this stage we find out, oh, there are people who are managing very well despite sharing similar resources having similar risk, risk factors, having access to the same resources, they are doing something different. And due to their, those behaviors, they are healthy. So what we do, we ask them, can we sit together with you? And you can ask some more questions. So we wanted to understand that what exactly they are doing and how they are doing. This how is very important because this how is the strategies. What enables them to do that? And then the next step is we again meet with the community. So it's a one week process. We meet with the community in the beginning, we tell them that we will find solution, and we ask them to come back and meet with us again after seven days, and we will share the solution with you. So there is a huge interest, because they are working with us throughout the process, so they see us, oh, we are doing something different. And then, again, we invite them, and then we share them these behaviors through role plays in a very interactive way, and we also bring the real role models, the positive deviants, the people who have the solution, and then they tell their stories to them. So it's very impressive. And then we say, so do you think that we can do these behaviors? We can adopt these behaviors? Can we follow them? And they say, yes, because these behaviors are from the community. These are simple, these are local, these are doable, and these are accessible. So there is a big commitment. And then we say, OK, who will help with us in sharing those behaviors? So this is how we find out the, 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 uh, the volunteers who will be working with us in the next six months or one year to share those behavior which we identify. We do not use high-tech IEC materials because sometimes, as one of my friends said, because sometimes you do not relate with those high-tech, high-resolution materials because these are from outside. So we just use simple flip charts. We use their own language and their own sketches which are their own sketches which they own very well. And then we uh, use these things, these materials in the, in the implementation. So the next, OK, so these are a couple of examples. And these are the people who are living in the same community. They never sick with malaria because they were doing these behaviors. So people can see them because they know them. And they can also relate the behaviors that, OK, due to those behaviors, they are healthy. So it means they are the social proofs. So they have the solution. And they have the people like them. And then they say, if she can do, why can't I? So this is how there is a lot of you know, interest, and that there's a lot of ownership, and then they commit to do that. So in the implementation, there are a few steps which we go through. The first of all, training of the volunteers, very, very important. We uh, not only train them in two days, we train them on a regular basis. So the first training is communication skills. They should know how to communicate messages. And then we train them on the messages which we identified from the community. So nothing is coming from outside. And then 
Uh, we conduct PD sessions on a regular basis. And we mean the community is conducting, the volunteers are conducting their own sessions. So uh, when their own people are doing things and when the actual role models are coming and presenting that look, Whenever my husband, I am a migrant worker, and my husband is a forest goer, whenever he goes to the forest, I always pack bed net in his bag and tell him, darling, do not forget to use bed net. Come home happy, healthy. So this is how there's a huge emotional connect as well. So these are not stale, simple, boring messages. It has the whole stories behind. And uh, so, Another very important thing, we always meet those volunteers. We are not paying them a single penny because this is not sustainable at all. We call them on a monthly basis and then we just pay them what the government system is paying, or what is according to the system, just the transportation charges. And during that meeting, we definitely assess the progress, what's going on, what are the challenges they are facing so that we could better support them. And, but we also try to um, provide them on job training because only two days training is not enough. So this is how, uh, you know, continuous capacity building. So they can see the motivation of coming next time. And this motivation leads towards, the, to, towards solving the retention problem as well, because we are working in Myanmar. And yesterday, see, I mentioned about uh, the Myanmar PD uh, project as well. We did not lose a single volunteer in the one year. So that, can shows, that shows that how these were motivated in the project. Um, monitoring is very participatory. They come up with their own maps, and they, when they meet on a monthly basis, they share with us that, okay, how many houses I covered? How many people I referred? So this is very kind of a, a participatory, a visual monitoring, and they can also feel very good that, oh, I, my efforts are making an impact in my village. So that motiv keeps them motivated. And what we do, we put one, one map in the village and one map in the health facility, so there is a very good connection between the volunteers and the health facility. So this is how we are trying to link them with the system because institutionalization is very important and that is sustainable. We will not stay, they will stay, system will stay. So we have to think about, we have to build on these things in the system from the very beginning. And then at the end, just to see how it worked, we organized at the you know, 11th month uh, seminar and you see a lot of people participate in that. And there was a lot of competition. They came up with a lot of drawings which were showing that how, you know, they were receiving messages. So this is kind of a reinforcement. Second very important thing, here we are, you know, informally handing over the project to them. So they feel that, oh, they are some, somebody to take it on. We will not be there forever. Community has to be responsible thing for things and they have to continue things. So this is how we just make sure that they understand that we just not withdraw quickly, but there is a process and they are responsible now to, to take care of this. Uh, evaluation has been done. We did proper baseline. I'm talking about Myanmar, uh, the proper pr in the pilot. And we just uh, completed uh, end line. We are in the process of analyzing the results and we will be very happy to share with you soon so that we could see what worked well. Uh, we also try to see the community mobilization or behavior change aspects as well. The leadership, the equity of participation, like my friend said, you know, that whether they only involve one segment of the community or they engage all parts of the community. Equity of participation, equality of participation, equity of information, so all those aspects were considered. Lessons learned, very, very important. My last few slides, Jeffrey, I gave you last, yesterday I gave you five extra minutes, so I hope so. You will ask, <laughs> okay, just kidding. So, one thing is, when we are talking about elimination, from control to elimination, you all know that in the elimination stage, people will not see a lot of malaria cases. So, to keep and maintain their enthusiasm and interest, we need to come up with some strategies which engages them in a very active way so that they are, you know, uh, they keep, you know, we, they are motivated to work with you for longer term. Uh, this is very, uh, strong interpersonal communication tool because it engages community and they own things, so it works very well. It also fills in the research, the formative research gap. We usually develop strategies based without you know, knowing what are the target audience, who they are, where they come from, what they do, especially when we will, talking, we will be talking about elimination, we will be talking about the margin, marginalized groups, the high-risk groups, migrants, are a difficult population. So we need to understand them very well to target them properly. So for that, this is very interesting approach and very useful approach. 
It is very culturally appropriate, appropriate because it does not bring anything from outside of the community. So it respects the indigenous, the local knowledge as well. As I said, we build the capacity, ongoing capacity of the volunteers. So maybe this is a motivation for the national program to learn that why these people stayed with us for a long time. We did not pay. We just pay uh, the, you know, the, the transportation, but the system is also doing the same thing. So maybe these are the small motivations on job training, supportive supervisions, and acknowledgement, timely acknowledgement, which works like a magic. Um, of course, some ch I did not mention challenges. It's not a very positive word. We are talking about positive deviance. So one lesson learned was that it is, uh, especially the first phase, one week phase, a bit technical. So we need people who can at least do some kind of, uh, some have some skills of uh, conducting focus group discussions so that they could better understand. But the rest, one year phase is simple. Our volunteers can easily do that. Um, as I mentioned, you know, it needs supportive supervision. Recommendations, just lessons learned, and based on that, we can, uh, we can uh, say that it can be scaled up through capacity building of uh, the national um, provincial staff, district staff. Uh, if we, can, we are also thinking about Myanmar. There was interest that we should do uh, TOT in Myanmar of the provincial, are uh, the people who are responsible for malaria at the provincial level. So that can be a way out to scale it up at the, different, at the uh, larger scale. And it, it can be, yeah, another way is that the PD role model, instead of engaging the big wigs like the experts and coming and sharing things, we can also bring those people in the media, local media, TV, provincial TV, and then they can share simple solutions, simple behaviors, which can have very strong impact. And uh, it could be applied on various other areas. We can also improve our public health facilities. We can also apply and see uh, we can also apply on the private clinics, private healthcare providers to improve on the uptake of our health services, malaria services. Um, just, so these are the, the key partners responsible for our work. So I would like, on, on behalf of Malaria Consortium, I would like to thank <laughs> all of them for uh, making this thing happen in these countries. And thank you very much. Jesu Mare, thank you.